I'm Jeff from 7000 BC, and over here is Bram, <laughs> who is also from 7000 BC. Uh, and 7000 BC is, for those of you who don't know, is a collective of comic creators from around New Mexico. Um, we're also a nonprofit, and and we've we have been doing workshops and libraries and other places for almost 20 years now. Um, <laughs> and putting this together, this uh, putting putting together this um, specific workshop is was part of uh, the lead up to 24 hour comics day, which is an annual international event that we've been a part of from the beginning. Um, and it's having its 20th annual event this year. So we're, we've partnered with the city of Albuquerque to do a bunch of extra things. And this is one of them. Um, so let's see, let's, uh, let's jump in here. And Yes, librarians rule. Um, we are, this is, this is what we're doing today, um, but we're also di digging into a really fundamental question for, for comics creators, all about how many radioactive squirrels does it take? <laughs> and we'll, we'll run across these squirrels along the way. But first, what we're gonna do is have you think about a couple of things here um starting with how your how's your day what you've been doing we don't want to know about it <laughs> um but we do want you to pick some moment that that affected you in some way that you had some kind of emotional reaction to um so just take a moment, think about that, and find a moment where you had a strong emotion of some kind. It doesn't matter what the emotion was. And just write it down for yourself. Okay. Hopefully you've got something in mind now. Um, um, so we're going to have you draw self-portrait. You only have two minutes and you can, you can take in this, this idea of a self-portrait as loosely as you want. Um, if you're feeling like a coat rack today, you can be a coat rack, that's fine. But what we wanna know is what, uh, let's see, what is the emotion that that coat rack has? So whatever you're drawing yourself, you can, you can draw your, your face, you can draw your entire body, and there's lots of emotion you can ex express just with your body. Um, but we want to know what the emotion is more than more than seeing a portrait of you. So you've got two minutes to create that on a sheet of paper where you did not write down uh, what you've been doing today, what your moment was. If you wrote that down, put that piece of paper away and grab another piece of paper and draw your two minute self portrait. So go.
And if you've just joined us, we're drawing two minute self portraits of something that happened to you today and gave you some strong emotion. So go ahead and, and draw that as best you can. You're about halfway there. Okay, wrap it up. You've got about 15 seconds. Maybe we'll let it go a little longer because we had some people come in late, but uh, get your drawings done. Is our time up? I think our time's our time up. Time is up. Okay. Pencils down, hands up, and cameras on. Yes, prepare. Prepare to hold your self portrait up to your screen. Turn on your video. Make sure your video is on. And here we go. Three. Oh, more if you need your video on. <laughs> if you don't have access to a camera, that's fine. <laughs> Go ahead and hold it up. What have you got? Ah, I got some good ones here. Anybody else can who can turn on a video? <laughs> okay. Um, Yeah, uh, Chris, you look like you might be saying something there. Um, but just hold that thought. And we're going to put it, put these down. And we're going to jump into digression number one. <laughs> there's a few things we're covering today. And then there's some other stuff we're covering um, next Wednesday when we do the, the next step in this course. Um, so this first digression is about is about teaching comics. And um, let me stop here and ask you, why do you think we started this this workshop with having you do a two minute self portrait? Anybody, and you can just turn on your mic and and let us know. Um, through us trying to draw our feelings or kind of like a two minute snapshot of how we feel about ourselves today, we get to see what the visual transformation can express so much better than we could possibly do ourselves with the words. And it also helps us possibly be more vulnerable about sharing something that maybe we would be awkward about sharing in words. Yes. Yeah. Good. That's one of the reasons. <laughs> Anybody else got another reason? Why else, if we're doing a if we're doing a workshop about comics, what is relevant to doing a, a quick self portrait? Ultimately, we would like the children to um, create their own media as well as as consume it. Yes, yeah, that's part of it. That's good. Anybody else got some other thoughts? Okay, here, uh, I'm gonna, here's a Strange Sports, uh, a comic that DC put out in the mid 70s um, of horror comics about sports, basically. So here's a, 
a random page here that I've opened to. <laughs> and let's see, we've got in this picture, we're looking at in, in terms of characters within this. Um, we've got someone who's on a horse, so that's two characters. Uh, there's a there's somebody driving a car. That's that's three. We've got the horse again. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, there's actually two people in that car. So uh, so that's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, uh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 20, 21, I think, uh, characters on that page. So, and this is just pretty basic, typical page. Um, so if you want to draw a comic, a whole 20, 22, 24 page comic, you've got to draw a lot of people or characters. <laughs> and you got to be able to draw them fast to get through the whole thing before your deadline. Um, so that's, that's another reason we do it. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is, is about getting everyone into working with comics and and um there was there was a note in the chat to get us thinking in illustrations which i think is where you're heading with that right we're yes we're we're, we're, we're getting into a new kind of language here and you know we have found that this kind of stunt at the beginning of a class just really just shifts people's way of thinking, you know, even just getting them out of whatever medium they've been using or creating in, as you said, Chris, and it gets you thinking visually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so another thing is, um, why do you think we just asked you why why we were doing starting with the, the uh, self portrait so we asked you about the self port about why we did the self portrait in terms of the content of what we were doing but in terms of the structure of what we're doing why did we just ask you about the content <laughs> anybody have any ideas on that No? Okay. Oh, show don't tell. That was that was something Crystal had, yes. <laughs> um, so basically we we asked you for a couple of reasons. One is it's always better to get the students to teach the class as as much as you can. So you ask them questions. Um, and this is just sort of general approach to teaching. Um, one of the things we know about librarians is that a lot of a lot of times you are expected to be able to teach um, without any training in teaching as part of your your degree. Um, so so what we're doing here is is we're giving you we're talking about um, what we are what we've been doing while also having you experience the workshop, but then also understand why we structured it the way we did. So, um, so I mentioned it's it's good to have the the students teach, and there's different reasons for that. One is that um, your brain actually functions better. You take in information. And the more you can process it, the more opportunity you have to process it. And part of processing that really makes you accept the information you're taking in is to re-express it in your own way. So, um, so if you've experienced this and then you say, hey, oh, I think this is what was going on for me, that, that um, that helps you remember it and it helps your brain uh, hang on to things. Um, and it gets you thinking and more engaged. Um, oh, good. Okay. 
Um, I'm just looking at the chat. Uh, so why did we stress clear emotion in this? Well, what's the importance of clear emotion in our, in our self-portraits? In terms of doing a comics workshop, why, why do we want clear emotion? Anybody? Because <laughs> it's a visual medium and uh, yeah. it's clear. Yeah, yeah. The comics are based on being able to show a clear emotion in what's going on. Um, that's that's how you get to know your characters. That's how you get to follow what's what's happening and how they're reacting to it. So let's. Uh, there's a comment in the chat about adjectives telling characters what feeling, and that's this is when I talk about this. Is what I say is yes. In a, in a prose book, you have a series of adjectives. In a comic, you have a face. And you know, we as human beings, neurotypicals are really, really good at reading human emotion. And that's a very powerful tool in comics. And it's also one of the things that um, I find that people may overthink when they say they can't, they, they don't know how to read comics. You know, they're, they're maybe trying to overthink or read into it. And this is something where you can kind of just get them used to, you know, you can express this, you can draw this, you can show you're angry by just having narrowed um, eyebrows. and you know, you, you as a human are used to reading these sort of things and they should feel more confident in being able to read and understand a comic. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at a few of these. Um, anybody who's, who's willing to share theirs again, and we're just going to look at your, at yours individually. You can start with, we can start with mine. Uh, if you don't have anybody holding your hand up yet. <laughs> uh, here's mine. I woke up this morning and all of my kitties were on the bed with me, snuggled up. So that was my happy slumber this morning. <laughs> um, do you get some some happiness out of that image? Yeah. Why? Oh. Uh, so, so pipe in. How do you, Jeff, hold it back up? Yeah. How do we know he's happy? Smile and a content eyes. Right. You know, that's and that's one of the things too, is it, it's that simple. Um, yeah. if you bet, you know, we, we what we teach relies a lot on on the work of Scott McCloud. If you've any of you were in, in, in have read Understanding Comics, he's got this whole thing about how simpler expressions are actually more relatable. So there's another one where you overthink, don't overthink it, right? A smile, how can you tell someone's happy? Half circle, right? <laughs> and it got across. <laughs> So let's go. Come on. Let's see your drawing. Come yeah. on. Okay. Who else? Who's, who's willing to share theirs again? Chris, I saw yours. I was I was intrigued. Come on. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh we got some over here. Yeah. Is it anvil wow. falling on you? <laughs> <laughs> that was sorry. <laughs> that was fascinating. <laughs> Um, anybody else? Ivy. Right. What what have what have we learned about showing people's smiling? Happiness. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> so ridiculously simple to do that. That's a great drawing. So you yeah. know, this is one of those things where it's it's just the 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 speed the speed of the drill and this is where you know a little bit of what we get into too. Um in these is you do things that are really, really fast because it's an equalizer of talent. Everyone has to strip down what they're doing to their absolute most basic. So even if you've got some you know, unskilled and incredibly skilled ones, they're all gonna hit kind of this baseline. They're all gonna come around to the same kind of, oh, this really, there are very simple symbols that we can use to communicate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One more, come on. Who else? Manuel, you want to show us yours? Okay. Can you make that one big chat? Oh, wow. Eyebrows. <laughs> Eyebrows are, so, are such a cheat for expressing emotion. Like two lines, you can do everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm guessing you weren't having mm -hmm. such a great day either. <laughs> it was a time. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Um, into the home stretch. You only need, need to make it through 40 more minutes of this nonsense. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're going to jump past our digression here and get to, we did that. Um, remember that everything affects your life. So everybody think about what is going to, what is going to change in your life as a result of this class. Think about that for a minute. Will you uh, write your grandma because she really needs a letter from you? Will you uh, try and figure out um, how, uh, how many uh, potato chips that you can actually stack? You know, there's many things you could get out of this class. You might take up the questionable profession of creating thieving radioactive squirrels. You know, don't necessarily endorse that, but, but it might happen. Okay, everybody got something in mind? Yeah? Okay, prepare to announce your life change to everyone. Everybody speak at the same time. Everybody turn on your mics. And everybody got their mics on? What's going to happen to you? Let's find out. You are going to win the lottery. Sky dive. Learn. Sky dive. Learn skydiving. Yes. <laughs> Help students become authors. OK. Yes. OK. Um, so while you're holding on to that idea of what's going to change, what what your life change is going to be, um, I want you to also do this. You are going to hold up your self-portrait again, but so you can see it next to this drawing. Your drawing can be on either side. Think about how these two connect. Our brains like to turn things into stories. Um, and so there's probably some kind of a story there. But maybe it's maybe it's not the most obvious story that you want to go with. Think think for a minute about you know how you put those images together into a story. What's going to surprise your reader, or delight your reader, or scare your reader? What are you? What do you want to do here? Um, this is the essence of comics. This is um, who knows what the what the uh, boxes in comics are called. Panels. Say that again. Panels. Panels, yes. Panels, um, sometimes you'll hear frames, but that's generally in, if you're looking at manga. Um, and does anybody know what the space between the panels is called? You might know this if you've read Scott McCloud, but no, anybody know? Is okay, the space. The gutter. Yes, yes, Iv. Good, good guess. This is the gutter here. It is the most important thing in comics, really. Um, it's a terrible name for something that's so important. <laughs> but that's that's where things happen. Um, what our brain does is it takes an image, and then the next image and tries to bridge that gap. Comics are not finished until they're read. Uh, the reader fills in this space with their own personal experience. Um, if you're reading a comic about Spider-Man and you see Spider-Man jump off a building here and swing to, the, to another building here, your brain is actually triggering all the physical 
elements in your body that you believe, based on your own personal experience, would would get Spider-Man from there to there. Um, but it also works, so it works in that sort of literal way, but it also works in a deeper way where uh, whatever information you're getting here and whatever information it turns into here um, is getting is getting filled in the emotion of it, the uh, reality of what it is, is filled in here um, in between the panels. So your job as a cartoonist is to make sure that whatever you put in here and here is clear enough that your reader gets this part right. Um, so we're going to take a minute, a few minutes here, and we're going to um, add something that will clarify your story. And in this, this is going to be a third panel. You can put it wherever in the sequence you want. You can arrange your two panels in whichever order you want. Um, and we're going to draw on a third page so that you can hold this up, hold up what will become your, your other panel, and you can see those against your picture of the guy with the, with the birds. So go ahead and come up with a, how that's all connected. Can you show the picture of the guy with the birds again yes. real fast? Yes. Thank you. There we go. And remember, you're, you're thinking about your self-portrait, and you're thinking about the emotion you were trying to, to uh, express. And just hang on to all those things and put them together into one, one story idea. And we'll take about five minutes for this one.
We're a little over halfway there. You got about another two minutes. Okay, that's about time. I'll give you a few more seconds to do it while I blather on for a moment. Um, you know, among the reasons as discussed, we enjoy doing these things with timers because it equalizes ability. It also really forces people to focus on what's important, right? Like if you give them a specific assignment, then they can narrow in on that. And one of the things that's also useful to point out is all comics are created on deadline. And um, comics usually are paid by per page. So it's all how fast you can get through your project. So it's also kind of an idea, good idea. It gives them, gets people in the mindset of what their creators are thinking when they're doing that. Cause they have to work fast. They have to make some decisions rapidly and they have to get stuff produced, you know, by deadline, which is now. So now pencils down. <laughs> okay. So somebody here said, uh, uh, you can't see it, but we drew ourselves in the bushes with binoculars in between the two panels. <laughs> so it's bird watching and and watching bird watchers, <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay. Well, let's let's hold up what we have um, and leave an appropriate gap wherever it goes. So there would be another page here. <laughs> Ooh, it's a lot of good stuff here. <laughs> Manuel, you can't decide how you're feeling. Yeah, there's some there's some great things here. Mine, uh, this man has led them into the cafeteria during lunch duty, and these crows are all over the cafeteria tables. <laughs> Do I have a duty vest on? Do that's awesome. Yeah. Who else? Who else wants to tell us what you have there? I um have my my anvil and my anvil says if I ever catch you feeding the birds again I will turn you into a coat hanger and crush you and <laughs> the image and then we have the a coat hanger person with an anvil approaching the top of them going oops <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Who else? One more, come on. Uh, 
mine goes from enraged to a little bit more pensive. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and hold those up again just for a sec. And where does your where does your uh, Birdman panel come in? In the middle. Okay. So the feeding the birds helped you calm down. You you weren't as angry yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Good stuff. So were you feeding the birds or just watching them being fed? Just watching. <laughs> okay. I went from happy here to uh, happy here to um, the the Birdman panel, and then looking at me, and and then he looks back at me, and and I'm. Actually, I've got the bird seed all over myself, and <laughs> and uh, and uh, deciding that the birds tickle. <laughs> okay, um, so we're going to go to on go on to our next digression here, which uh, there we go, which is about clarifying that space between the panels, clarifying the gutter. Um, and this is uh, really about clarifying the moments within your comic. Um, so the, the uh, one of the things with comics is that our brains, um, comics have multiple senses that are used in in uh, creating the comic, you know, uh, the easy one is is like um, sound effects that you can get in a comic, um, or you know, explosions that can affect your your vision, that kind of thing. Um, so you've got you've got all of your senses that you can play with, and you can play with them in a more direct way than in a novel say. Um, so one of one of the things that I did while we've been going through these things is I haven't been reading the literal text that is on the screen. And one reason for that is that um, if you're doing a PowerPoint kind of thing and you're just reading the text, it only affects the part of your brain that that gives you the literal translation. Um, so if I said, if I read pigeon, you would process that just as pigeon. And unless you took a moment after that to create your own story about the pigeon, <laughs> um, that's all you're going to get out of it. Um, but if you are uh, uh, getting getting it in a bunch of different ways so if you're hearing me saying um wiggly wiggly pigeon <laughs> you know you might hear that in my voice that there's a wiggly pigeon as opposed to just an ordinary pigeon and so that would give you a different way of processing it and it actually does trigger all those parts of your brain um which we had talked about a little bit before, but but it's a sort of a deeper thing than than what um, than just getting something a little bit more than than the literal. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, well, speaking, um, speaking of literally, you know, what, what also I always think about is that visuals just literally bypass reason. Right. The, the way our bodies work is that our visual information is processed without benefit of us thinking about it. And so it is a real direct route to emotion. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, I keep derailing. One, no, you're, you're good. Um, one thing that uh, the gutter does is that it's we talked about how um, you're filling that in with your own information. 
um, if you get really good at it, at, at writing and, and drawing comics, you can, you're, you're, it means you're going to be leading the, um, the reader towards their interpretation of a, of a, of something specific that you're after. Um, so if you're, if they get that first moment right, that first gutter, and if you're really deft at what you're doing, you can make the next one be your, the next thought that you want them to, to get. So, so that you're not just um, clarifying that one moment for its own moment's sake. You're getting them thinking in a direction that that is leading them towards a conclusion for the next time they have to fill something in. Um, and that's that's something that uh, like works really well in mysteries or that kind of thing where you're giving them clues and you want them to pick up on certain clues at a certain point, but but not until they you know want you want them to know this one over here, but you don't want them to know it until after they've gone through this one here. Um, so uh, let's see. Oh, so stepping back again to how we are teaching, um, we're not doing it too much with this because this is because this is virtual. But especially if you're teaching in person, one of the things that you can do is um, like the like the uh, the the beginning of what we did today when we all showed our our portraits self portraits to each other and we asked we asked questions of the of you. Um, as a teacher, you always want to make some kind of one-on-one -on -one connection with everyone in your in in your class, everybody that's there for the workshop, um, and uh, you can't always do that. But if you ask everybody questions and you're teaching through them answering the questions you're in essence sort of deputizing everyone in the classroom to be your one on one connection. Um, so they're they the other people there teach on your behalf, even if they're saying you know figuring it out wrong they're still figuring something out <laughs> and they're sharing it with the the uh, another person there. Um, and they can kind of work on it together then. So, um, so we're gonna get back to our major question of the day um, about these darn radioactive squirrels. So we are going to read you this comic here. It's a little two page comic. And it goes, dude, what? Your banana was stolen by radioactive squirrels. Mm -hmm. Really? No, I ate it. No, how could you? That was my only banana in the whole world. Dude, wait, I have something important to tell you. What is it? I'm a figment of your imagination. My banana is okay? Mmm, banana. Okay, so we're going to look at this for a minute. Um, and let's see, there we go. Okay. So we have something here that we can manipulate a little bit. So in terms of this story, um, we've been, we were talking about clarifying moments, and now we're going to be talking about clarifying the larger story. Um, so in terms of this, 
this two page story here. What do we have here that that is unnecessary? What panels don't we need? What can we get rid of? And what still have the same of? basic story. Anybody? Panels 11 and 12. 11 and 12 over here. Maybe even 13. Yeah. So the crying, the below with like the window looking at the person in the window and maybe the clock as well. All the silent panels. Uh, oh, please. Yeah. And the one right above the clock, I'd probably bring that one back. Okay. Do we need the clock? Maybe. Yeah, Maybe? sure. Let's okay. leave the clock. <laughs> what else can we get rid of? Somebody else. Uh, panel two. What? That one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, your banana was stolen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else can we get rid of? The squirrel with the banana. Panel one, two, three, four. This one here? Yeah. Are you stealing it? Yeah. Okay. What else can we get rid of? What else don't we need? Someone said panel uh, nine and panel six in the chat. Ah, nine and six. There we go. Okay, let's see where we're at. Uh, dude, your banana was stolen by radioactive squirrels. Really? No, I ate it. How could you? That was my only banana in the whole world. Dude, wait, I have something important to tell you. What is it? I'm a figment of your imagination. My banana's okay? Mmm, banana. Okay, anybody think uh, there's something else that we could change on this? Or is this the perfect, ultimate, best possible ever story <laughs> version of it? I actually liked it more with the silent pieces. I thought the art really gave a lot to it. So I okay. think we're taking away from not making it perfect. Yeah, yeah. So number 11. The here is... Someone said oh, taking oh, out go number ahead, 11. Michelle? You saying something? Number, number 11. Is number 11. Okay. You just go straight to the picture. Mm, banana. Oh, uh, number 11. Second to the left. Banana is okay. My banana is okay. Is that the one you want? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's going to have a slightly different opinion. And this goes back to us filling in things with our own life, life experience, right? Um, we can keep wrangling this around in, this, in a whole bunch of different ways. And one thing that this can be really helpful with is genres. So there's a horror version of it. Dude, what? Your banana was stolen by radioactive squirrels. No! Dude, wait, I have something important to tell you. Oh, tense moments. What is it? What is it? I'm a figment of your imagination. My banana is okay? I'm not going to answer that. There might be a sequel. <laughs> How about a slice of life? Dude, your banana was stolen. Really? No, I ate it. Dude, wait. I have something important to tell you. My banana is okay? Mm, banana. Kind of a low-key kind of version of it there. Uh, how about paranormal romance? Your banana was stolen. Really? No. How could you? That was my only banana in the whole world. What is it? I'm a figment of your imagination. Happy ending, banana. How about uh, a nine-year-old's animated video version of it? Because uh, those things just work like that. Dude, wow, by radioactive squirrels. Really? No, I ate it. Ooh, my banana's okay. Mm, banana. Almost makes sense, but <laughs> but it's a nine-year-old's version of it. Um, so the thing with all of these is is it's shaping it in different ways. It's it's still kind of telling you the story, same story, but it's but it's uh, turning it into something different. Um, and everybody's going to have a slightly different approach to that. So uh, here's the here's a good question for you. So which of these panels was essential? 
to telling this story. Anybody have a guess on what uh, what panel has got to be there? The one that's in the What's that? What'd you say? What's in the gutter? Oh, just in general, the, the spaces in between. Yeah, yeah, actually, um, if you can, whatever spaces you've, you're putting in in between there are, are essential. Um, but is there one panel that we have to have there? I vote number nine. Number nine? Is that the very last one you mean? The banana? Yes. Okay. Well, let's. I think, let's, and if we go look at the chat, I think Ivy's got a good observation. Depends uh, on the story. I think you could get rid of any of the panels and make a different story. There you go. Yeah. Um, Marissa says the banana is essential. So let's go back through what we have here and we'll we'll take away anything that was not used in any one of our four examples here. So we go through the nine-year-old and the paranormal story. We get down to only four panels that were essential. The slice of life, only got two panels left. The horror, there's nothing essential in this. <laughs> so this comes back, Ivy's right. Um, you can you can tell this story and you don't need anything that was in it and um, that's one of the key things for for comics is that you know it it really doesn't matter um, you can tell your story any way you want how many times have we heard the or seen the uh, the uh, uh, origin of any given superhero <laughs> Um, and they're always different, and and they're still the same basic story, but it's somebody else's take on it. Um, I mean, and that's part of what makes again. comics really powerful is that you're able to read any story and put yourself in the gutter, like you were saying, Manuel. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a good way to think about it. Okay. Um, Jeff, if I, yeah, I could. Um, the notion that was brought up of the clock coming back in and out and that discussion around it too. Um, mm -hmm. I do a whole lecture on time and comics because time is really, really weird because time is weird to begin with. And now we're making time visual. And in this case, you can really start to see, well, if you cut out that stuff, it actually doesn't change the story, but it kind of changes the feel. It changes the reader's perception of it. So there's also times where you're putting things in to draw things out, you know, draw a moment out or draw attention to something or build a feeling and making time visual in any of several ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, let's go to our last digression here. Um, just clarifying comics and this is this is what we've been looking at and we've talked about a lot of it here along the way here um, but it's all about clarity in terms of clarifying the larger story um, we do do a workshop on uh, on genres and um, and just how you can work with them in creating your story. It's it's fun to uh, sometimes do some thumbnails, um, which is where you just do a mini tight, tight, very tiny little version of of the story that you're telling. And, and so that you can see how it's all working and to take that and turn it into a different genre, just because you'll learn something from it uh, about your story. Um, Yeah, and and part of what you'll learn with that is that 
we were all kind of looking at it from slightly different genres, right? We have, we have a particular interest in certain genres, each of us do. And so the, as we're, as we're uh, seeing the story through different genres, we're seeing things that different readers will take out of it um, that, that may make it more interesting or it may make it so that the, the story becomes unintelligible. <laughs> so, but it's nice to know that. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, uh, I think that's pretty much all we have for today. Do you have anything you want to add to that, Bram? No? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think um, we could have questions. I think we're, we're due to end at four, right? Right. But yeah. Jeff and I have a few minutes. minutes. <laughs> if anyone wants to kind of pull on any other other threads that we've gotten there. But, you know, I think there's a, there's a few things that we fundamentally hit on when we're doing these that, you know, we we, we led you through and then discussed. And, you know, that's to, to first off, get them doing all the work, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and <laughs> But but also it gets them to really experience the decisions that they have to make. And you know, I've run this workshop too, or you know, ones like this, for 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 readers as part of a class where they're reading a graphic novel, is you make them do it so they can start to better understand what goes into it. Um, you know, and we do uh, I do it with American Born Chinese, if you're familiar with that, which is just an extraordinary work in so many ways. But also like the art is so simple, and they start to think that simple art is easy to do. <laughs> and then very quickly through this, you realize it's very, very difficult to do stuff simply. And you, and so now that, you know, something that they might've just blown past, they're now going to stop and take a moment to, to look at. And, you know, I think that's very useful to, um, to especially ones who might not be ex um, as experienced comic readers and are ones who might think a little bit less of comics as they think it's a little less sophisticated. And then you put a pen in their hands and you make them do it and you stay, they learn. <laughs>